All right, what is up guys? This is Ivan from BernieBiz.com and today it's going to be a short video. Uh, we're going to talk about interrupts. Uh, we've used interrupt before in uh, other tutorials. Most boards only have a limited number of pins that you can use for uh, interrupts. Now interrupts, as you may know or not know, basically what it does is that as the code is running, it will look at the pins and if something happens on one of those interrupt pins, it will pause the code, go to that interrupt that's in the code, execute that, and then come back to the main code, the main loop. Uh, interrupts are really something that you need to use for some purposes. Uh, like in this case here, we have a rotor encoder that we used before. And if we were to write code and put that in the main loop to check if we are using the or rotating the um, rotary encoder, uh, basically the UNO that we have would basically just do that. It wouldn't have time to actually run any other code because it would be busy just checking the rotary encoder uh, to see if we're using it. Now, if we connect the, let me go back. If we connect the pin of the rotary encoder to, and this one is a UNO, the UNOs have two hardware pin that you can use for interrupts. It's interrupt zero and one, which are connected to pin two and three on the UNO. And as you can see in the graphic that I'm putting up right now, uh, different boards have more uh, interrupts pin that you can use, uh, some have less. Uh, so, with that limitation, let's say you want to use more than one rotary encoder or another sensor uh, to actually um, monitor a lot of stuff, then you're going to run out of interrupt pins uh, very fast, especially on a UNO that only has two. So, uh, what we're going to look at today is a library that's going to be able to uh, actually transform all the pins, any pins that we want, into interrupt pins. And it's very easy to use, and uh, we're going to write a little piece of code that's basically, it's gonna, let me go back. When I turn the rotary encoder, the LEDs are gonna light up, up or down, and I'm gonna switch the pins. So I'm gonna start with the original pin, which is uh, the pin number two for interrupt zero, and another interrupt code that will be connected to pin 11, which basically is not an interrupt pin by default, but it will work the same way. And you'll see it's as fast, and if it's not, it's, uh, I can't see it. So basically, it's not going to slow down your code at all. So let's go check out the code. And you'll see it's very simple. We just need to load that library. And then it's, uh, we're attaching an interrupt to any pin that we want. And you can have as many as you want. Uh, all, one thing to keep in mind, though, interrupts will run one at a time. Uh, so basically, let's say you have two sensors. And they both... Um, they will trigger an interrupt at the same time. It's never at the same time. Uh, so basically the first one will go to its interrupt, run its code, and then the other one will run after that. So let's pause here, let's look at the code, and then we'll be back and we'll test it out. All right, so here we are in the code that we're gonna use today for this tutorial. Uh, we're gonna go from the top. So we're including the pin change INT, which is the pin change interrupt library that is gonna enable us to put interrupts on any pin that we want and we're including also the fast LED library that we used before for the RGB stick. Um, as a note, if you go to our website brainybits.com slash tutorials um, you'll find pages of all our tutorials uh, video that we do where you can get the schematic, the code and any library that we used in uh, this video will be available for download on our website. Uh, most of the time, the page follows two, three days after we do a video, so you can check that out if you want. Uh, then we're defining the uh, pins uh, that the RGB stick is connected to. Uh, we're initializing the library here, and we've done uh, tutorials on this uh, FastLED library before, so if you check out our other YouTube videos, you can find more information on how this works here. And then we do rotary encoder module connections. So we're defining the pin CLK on the rotary encoder connected to two. Pin two is connected to the UNO interrupt zero because there's two interrupts on the UNO. There's uh, interrupt zero and interrupt one, which correspond to pin two and pin three. Uh, so we're defining that first. And then the uh, DT, uh, DT pin is connected to pin four. And here we're defining another interrupt pin that is going to be initialized by the library on pin 11 and we're going to see we're going to do uh, two interrupt uh, code 
Uh, then we have two variables to detect if uh, the rotor encoder was, uh, was moved and how many LEDs to light, which we set to zero at the beginning, meaning don't light any LEDs at the beginning. And here we have our first interrupt, so that's on pin 2. So if it detects any changes on pin 2, which corresponds to interrupt 0, it's going to jump into this code here and actually run this. Uh, so we do a delay of 1. We, we read the pin clock first to make sure that, yes, something happened. And then pin DT to, if a digital read of pin DT is positive, that means we did a counterclockwise rotation. So we said the, if the lead to light is greater than 1, then we set it minus 1. So we decrease the number of LEDs that we want to light. And if it's the opposite, it's not digital read, then means a clockwise rotation. And we check if the light is greater than 9. And if it's not, then we increase it uh, by 1. And then we set the LED change to true, which is going to be uh, used in our main loop. Now if we go down... Here we have the second routine, and this should not be pin 8, this should be pin 11. Uh, so this is the interrupt that's going to be made by the uh, library that we're using. So we're setting the pin 11, we're setting it as an interrupt pin. So it's the same exact code, except we're changing some of the variables name. So if pin 11 is, uh, detects any change, it's going to jump to this interrupt code and run this. Now if we go down, we have our main setup to set up the uh, FastLED library, we're clearing the LEDs, and then we're showing basically at the beginning no LEDs LED, uh, lit. And then we do our pin mode here, which are inputs. And here, you can see both interrupts. Let me just move this in here a little bit more. There you go. Uh, so the first one, attach interrupt, is the one by default that you would find in the Arduino IDE. So interrupt zero, the uh, name of the interrupt uh, function that we created at the top and change. So basically interrupt zero is always connected to pin two on the UNO. We've, we've seen that. And change meaning it doesn't matter if it goes high or low. As long as it, there's a, there is a change on the pin, it's going to jump into that interrupt. Now the other one is the library code. So it's a little bit different phrasing here. So it's attach pin change interrupt. And then you can put the pin, uh, the pin that you want to monitor so this value here is equal to 11 that we set at the top, and that's the name of the, um, the, uh, f the interrupt function, and the same thing change. So it's very similar, uh, similar except the phrasing is a little bit different, but it, that's it. That's how easy it is to actually uh, put an interrupt on any pin that you want using this library, that little piece of code right there. So that's all you need. So then we have our main loop, which is very, very small. So this runs if the rotary encoder rotation is detected. So if LED change, which we set to true, if it did uh, go into the interrupt, then let change is equal to false right away because we don't want this to repeat. And then we decide which LEDs to light up. So we clear the display first, and then we do a loop to actually decide which, uh, let me go here, uh, which color, depending on the amount of LEDs that we're lighting, be red, orange, or green and we set the brightness and we show. And that's it. So that's the piece of code, the loop that it's going to go through. And if any of these interrupt detect a change, then it will jump to the interrupt zero here, or the new one that we created on pin 11. So there you go. So we're going to upload that to uh, the Uno, go back to our test bench, and uh, check it out how it works. All right, so we're back, and we loaded the code to the UNO that we were just looking at. Uh, the UNO is plugged in. And right now, the pin of the rotor encoder is connected to pin number 2, which is equals to uh, interrupt 0. Uh, I turned down the light so you guys could see the uh, LEDs light up a little bit better. So all I'm going to do is basically turn the, um, the rotor encoder, and it's on interrupt 0. So it's, it's going to trigger that interrupt and light up the LEDs. So there we go. So as you can see, it's very fast, and that's the uh, uh, interrupt zero that we're using, which is connected to pin two. So now what we're going to do, we're actually going to, let me bring this down, we're going to move the pin from, uh, the cable from number two to number 11 that we set in our code. So let me do that right now, number 11 is right here. So now, when I turn the rotor encoder, 
it should trigger the new interrupt that we created on pin 11. So let's check that out. And as you see, it works also. And it's as fast. I mean, I can't really see a difference. And there's probably a difference, but it must be so minimal that you can't really see it. So there you go. So that works fine. So if you need more than two interrupts on a new board, you, have, you can use the uh, normal one, interrupt 0 and 1, pin 2 and 3, or you can assign any pin to an interrupt. So there you go, guys. That's the way the, this is going to be the end of this tutorial. Uh, this might not be something that you need right now, but it's something that's good to know for a future project that you might be thinking about, uh, that you know now that you can have more than two interrupts uh, on a Nuno board uh, just by uh, using this simple library and actually assigning any, any pin an interrupt as you want. Uh, so like I would say guys, if you like these videos, please subscribe to our channel. And also if you have any idea for uh, future tutorials or anything you would like us to do a video on, please leave it in the comments below. So that will wrap it up for today's tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, my name is Ivan and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.